manufacturing is alive and well in Glasgow and across Scotland. Uh, the scale of the ambition and the opportunities uh, is greater than it's been in over a generation. Uh, and not just the aspiration, it's the reality of the major investments that have been, been created over the past decade. Uh, and I can give you a flavour of that. Uh, it's worthwhile reflecting uh, in the city of Glasgow and uh, in Renfrewshire, just out at the airport, we have two major international scale innovation districts. Uh, and the innovation district concept has been around for decades. What we're seeing here in and around Glasgow is a, is a realisation of that proposition where we bring great talent, uh, great infrastructure, great research and innovation capability, but very importantly, the creation of clusters in industrially led, you know, business focused with OEMs, supply chain partners, underpinned by great national uh, innovation support from the UK government, from Scottish government, indeed from the from the local authorities that are in now around the region to create these innovation districts right in the heart of the city, uh, two blocks down from the Glasgow City Council headquarters itself. We have the Glasgow City Innovation District, a uh, big focus there around pharmaceutical manufacturing, uh, and JP will touch on that later on, I'm sure. Uh, advanced materials, sensors, and advanced communications, industrial informatics, which of course is a a uh, different way of talking about data analytics, AI, uh, and, uh, and the likes computational intelligence, but very much focused in creating these pathways from what we call low TRL, that's low technology readiness levels activity, where we've got discovery research, low MRL or manufacturing research readiness levels, right through to TRL9, MRL9, where we're actually making things. Companies are uh, setting up manufacturing capabilities, supplying into markets, and increasingly through the concept of Industry 4.0, where we've got automation, robotics, uh, advanced manufacturing technologies. We're getting that cross-cutting uh, cut through multiple sectors, whether it's in aerospace, whether it's in energy, photonics, space technologies. Who knew that Glasgow was only second to California in the manufacturing of satellites? Uh, we also have the UK National Centre for Pharmaceutical Manufacturing, uh, and we've got the National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland that Keith will talk about, uh, based out at the airport. So the Glasgow City Innovation District is one. The other is the Advanced Manufacturing Innovation District out at the airport. Uh, that is a cluster of capabilities, the Advanced Forming Research Centre, which started about uh, a decade ago, part of the UK's high value manufacturing catapult, a major innovation driver uh, that's been led by uh, UK government investment and Innovate UK, but very importantly, driving towards industry need needs. It's taking the benefit of strong basic research capability, the great talent from our universities and colleges, building a manufacturing skills academy because investors not only need great ideas and great facilities, they need great people. And that ecosystem has been created very effectively. And very soon, as, as you'll hear from Keith and JP, uh, the opening of what will net up to about another £150 million pounds worth of investment for the National Manufacturing Institute for Scotland and the Medicines Manufacturing Innovation Centre, working with AstraZeneca, GSK and others. So all of these uh, activities are being recognised. UK government uh, built in the reference to the Glasgow City Innovation District to their UK R&D roadmap, referring to it as an exemplary ecosystem where business and industry meet academia, supported by the public sector. For me, that's what I would call the triple helix in action, where you bring business and industry alongside public sector and academia uh, towards a strategic objective, real power behind that. And, and AMIDS, the Advanced Manufacturing District, uh, referred to very recently in the UK government levelling up white paper, uh, where they're now committing to creating three innovation accelerators across the UK, one of which will be in Glasgow. And later this week, uh, along with other industry leaders, I'll be meeting with Bayes uh, to talk about how Glasgow is going to be coming forward for a, a major proposal uh, in the region of about another hundred million pounds to invest in what we're doing. So uh, the, the whole activity, uh, innovation strategy that Mr. Kwasi Kwarteng published a year ago, talked about the components in and around my University of Strathclyde, but underpinning that were these two big innovation districts. And again, we'll hear from Paul about how that landing spot in terms of 
great property, great infrastructure. But what I would also emphasise, Richard, it's about ecosystem. It's about people. It's about vision. Uh, it's also about getting these big world-class innovation hubs. And that's what we've created through GCID and AMIDS. This compares very favourably with what's going on in Singapore, in Boston, in California. Uh, and people are now coming to Glasgow in the west of Scotland to see how this is being done. Uh, and it's being done uh, by all of us in a collaborative way. Uh, and for those of you that are seeking to invest or collocate, I would suggest that you're becoming at a perfect time because we have a thriving and vibrant com community. Going beyond ambition and aspiration, all of that is important. This is about the reality of building momentum and accelerating the opportunity to deliver opportunities. Uh, amongst other things, I also chair the Glasgow Economic Leadership Board uh, and advanced manufacturing and engineering is at the heart of the city's vision for the future of Glasgow. Uh, and most importantly, we're now seeing really competitive capability. So Rolls-Royce, Boeing, GSK, AstraZeneca, and a myriad of others, they're not coming here just because we've got great research, which we do have, they're coming because we've got great infrastructure that they can connect to and lead in a large measure these clusters that they can connect to and use that as a way of connecting to the international community. And uh, for example, we've got uh, collaborative research going with uh, partners in South Korea, uh, in Singapore, uh, across Europe uh, and in, in North America. So this hub based in and around Glasgow is connected to this web of manufacturing capability uh, that gives us a, an enormous opportunity. And just as we're building back better, just as we're coming through post-COVID rebuilding of the economy, the penny has now dropped. Manufacturing, it should be at the heart of our economy. We've seen the challenges of not having a strong manufacturing and supply chain capability in the UK through the vaccine programme, and that's why the UK Vaccine Task Force was set up. And through that, we're now seeing government awakening to the fact that we need OEMs, supply chains, great research underpinning and large scale infrastructure. Uh, and my sense, Richard, is now we're through the tipping point and manufacturing is back. H high value manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, and Glasgow's going to be one of the international leaders in that space.